friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Zita. And on my channel, I do DIYs and makeovers on a budget. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Oakwell Home. So let's get started on today's DIYs and see what I've created. Today, I'm participating in a fun Dollar Tree Farmhouse DIYs collab with my friends Ellie from DIY From House to Home, C from CJ DIY, and Gwen from At Home with Gigi. So once you finish watching my video, don't forget to go in my description box where you'll find the playlist for all of these amazing creators and see what they created today. For my first DIY, I picked up this little bird. I think it's a cardinal. It's red, so I'm assuming it's a cardinal. Uh, and I'm going to make this over and make it look more farmhouse so it can go with uh, more decor in my home. So I did paint it white first. I'm not sure why I did that. I think I was going to try and distress it back to the color that it already had. But I decided against that and once the white paint was dry, I applied a coat of black paint. And once that was dry, I applied my coat of uh, white chalk paint. And this is a homemade chalk paint that I'm using. So if you haven't made homemade chalk paint before, I'll leave that video in my description box if you'd like to try some for yourself. So once the chalk paint has dried, uh, now I'm going to distress it back where all that beautiful detail is on its wings and its tail and its face and uh, its eyes. And I'm going to bring out all that detail, the black underneath. And um, this is going to go more with uh, my decor. And this turns out so beautiful. He turns out so cute. So this is what it looks like on one side. And uh, this did take a little bit of arm work. So once he's all distressed, this is what he looks like. What do you think? He looks so much better, doesn't he? And he's going to go with so much more decor instead of that red. So I uh, distressed him in quite a few places there. So now he looks uh, really great. And once I finished distressing him, I applied a clear coat of wax and this piece was finished. So let me know in the comments what you think of this little guy. For my next DIY, I picked up this little box and uh, I'm going to transform this into a little tea box and I'm also going to show you what it looks like with some uh, flowers in it. So I'm uh, giving it a coat of my homemade uh, white chalk paint here first and I'm going to decoupage this little piece with um, a beautiful floral napkin that I think I picked up at the Dollar Tree uh, a while ago. And uh, I also have some other napkins there from Ninny Napkins. So if you're looking for some napkins for yourself, you can go in my description box where I'll leave a 10% off coupon code to Ninny Napkins. So I'm not sure if this one is from Ninny Napkins or if it's from the Dollar Tree. I've had it for quite a while now. Uh, and I store all my napkins in a binder so they're easy to find. Um, so this is a beautiful little floral napkin. Uh, I think it looks very farmhouse. It reminds me of uh, some wallpaper that my grandmother had when I was a kid. So I've just cut around and, uh, the napkin to fit the front and I'm going to put a piece on the back as well. And then I'm going to uh, paint the sides later on with uh, a pink color. I decided it would go nice with those flowers on there. So I'm just using a Dollar Tree disposable shower cap here. It's a really soft plastic, so it works great for 
um, pressing down your napkin so it doesn't tear. So once that Mod Podge is dry, uh, you can um, do your sanding to get that excess napkin off. And you're going to want to let your Mod Podge dry before you do your sanding. Otherwise, it's going to rip it and shred it along the edges. And uh, so once it was dry, I also took some little bit of rougher sandpaper there and uh, sanded in between those grooves there. And doesn't that look beautiful? I love that little rose print. So I did this on the front and the back. And once I sanded it, I wiped it down with a damp cloth to get any dust off before I applied my top coat of Mod Podge. Now you can all apply your um, top coat of Mod Podge right away if you want. I like to let mine dry sometimes. So then I put that pink paint on the sides and this is what it looks like. What do you guys think of this beautiful little piece? I'm going to show you what it looks like with some flowers as well. As well. And I kind of distressed it along the edges there to give it that more of that farmhouse warm look. Aren't those flowers beautiful in there? Let me know what you think of this one. For this next DIY, I picked up this little metal platter and uh, first I'm going to apply some Fusion Ultra Grip and that's going to help my chalk paint stick to the metal better because if you don't put something like this on, the paint will most likely come off very easily. Uh, if you don't have any Fusion Ultra Grip, you can use a Rust-Oleum clear coat on there before you paint it. So this is what it looks like after that Ultra Grip is dry. And I did put that on the front and the back because I'm going to paint both the front and the back to finish off the piece. You don't have to paint both sides if you don't want to. Sometimes I like to finish the whole piece. So first I'm starting out with a black chalk paint and then my white homemade chalk paint. And I believe I put three coats of chalk paint on here to get that solid white look. Now, once that was dry, I'm taking my damp cloth and I'm going to distress back to all that beautiful detail along the edges. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm gonna make a little frame with this. Now, I can use it as a tray as well or you can hang it on your wall and I'll show you what I'm going to do to do that. Uh, so I have some redesign uh, transfers here. Um, you could also use some stencils from the dollar store and the Dollar Tree also has uh, some transfers as well. I've seen some floral ones there that you could use. And I'm going with a pink flower here from Prima Redesign Transfers. And I'm also cutting out some words here to put on the bottom of that flower. Um, so once I have it lined up, I'm just taking that piece from underneath. Now, before you lay it down, friends, make sure you want uh, to put that piece of transfer in the spot where you're going to put it because if it touches that chalk paint, it may stick and uh, you won't get it up if that's not where you want it to go. Now, I do see a lot of people apply a, um, a sealant before they apply their transfers, not a wax sealant, like a, a clear coat or something like that to help the transfer stick. I don't do that a lot. I find they stick fine to the chalk paint, but I have heard one of my viewers say it depends on where you live. If you live in a high humidity area, you may need uh, like a clear coat on there before you apply your transfers or sometimes they don't stick, but I have not had that problem. So friends, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing. Hit that subscribe button and your notification bell. That way YouTube will notify you when I post new videos. So the final step for this 
uh, project, well, the second fi final step, <laughs> I'm applying a clear wax to the whole piece to seal in the transfer and to seal in my chalk paint. And now for the last step here, I am just putting some hot glue on the back and uh, some twine and I'm going to use that for a hanger. This little metal tray is not too heavy so it's going to hold up fine and I'll show you what that looks like on the wall and also as a tray. So let me know in the comments what you think of this little beauty. For my next DIY, I picked up this little frame. Uh, it's just a wood color, and I actually like the wood color. I like the little piece at the bottom as well. I think it gives it that farmhouse look. And I picked up these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. Uh, and these are nice, colorful floral print. So I'm not going to paint that frame white, but you can see what these flowers would look like on a white background just from the sheet that they're on there. But I'm just going to cut them out and apply them to the natural frame. Uh, but, you know, this is just going to give it that added detail. So I'm just measuring out and cutting um, the length that I need for the... Uh, each side of the frame here and um, you will see me take out that little metal piece at the bottom and uh, so I'm just going to burnish that down with um, a tool here that I have from my uh, Prima redesign transfers and my IOD transfers they come with these little tools to help you burnish down your transfers so I have uh, a few of these laying around from some other transfers I have. So once you burnish that down, you can take that plastic and just uh, smooth it out some more with the plastic and just burnish it down some more. So I'm going to apply these uh, floral transfers all around the uh, frame and uh, you will see me take off that metal piece, which I should have done first, and I should have, and then you'll see me put it back on before I applied a clear wax, but I should have applied the clear wax before I put the metal piece back on. So um, these have really tiny screws, so I'm just using a, an eye glass, sunglass screwdriver here that gets these little screws off. Um, so what do you think friends do you think i should have painted the frame white before i applied these what do you think let me know in the comments would you have painted it white or would you have left it just with the 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 natural color wood so here you see me apply that metal piece back on but like i said uh i should have done done this after i applied the clear wax so you can use this frame to put a little art piece inside or a picture and I'm going to show you both. So I just took that um, little piece of paper that was already inside of the frame and I turned that piece of paper around and you're going to see me use some Dollar Tree transfers uh, that I talked about earlier uh, that you could use on some of your projects. Um, so here I'm waxing it and <laughs> as you see I put the metal piece on before but I should have done that afterwards so here's some little transfers I got at the Dollar Tree so if you're looking to try some transfers because sometimes it can be a little expensive from you know to buy them from other companies so if you want to try them uh, just go to your local Dollar Tree and see if they have any. And there's quite a few beautiful little transfers on this piece and they work really well. 
So this is the other side of that paper that was all, already in the frame and I picked out a floral transfer here just to kind of match the floral on the uh, frame. So this is what it looks like. So I was thinking it looks a little too white for the frame as you can see. So what I did is I took it out and I uh, took some of my antiquing wax and I just took a little rag and I just put some antiquing wax, kind of dabbed it off on the paper there and then applied the antiquing wax and just kind of um, rubbed it in and rubbed it away just to give it more of that antique -y look, you know, and to kind of match the frame. Um, so let me know if you would have kept this white or if you would have applied the antiquing wax as well. So again, you can use this frame to hold a little art piece um, or you can put a picture in there. And I'm going to show you both ways. So let me know in the comments once you see the finished product what you think of this piece. For my next DIY here, I have some clay pots from the Dollar Tree and uh, this clay here is from uh, the Dollarama here in Canada and I know uh, you viewers from uh, other countries other than Canada don't have a Dollarama but the, the clay that I just showed you there to the side that is from the Dollar Tree. Um, so I just did not want to open a new package. So I'm just using the clay that I already had open, but it's the same type of clay. So um, check your local dollar store to see if they have any clay. A lot of times they don't have white, but I just found some white at my local Dollarama. So, um, but I'm going to paint this so it doesn't matter that it's like a cement color. So now I'm taking some IOD stamps and these are the crockery stamps and you can use some stamps from the Dollar Tree as well to put something on your clay pot. So I just stamp that into the clay and I'm kind of just making a little design here kind of different than what the stamp is. And uh, now I'm going to put some glue that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to put that on the back and smear it all around and then I'm going to apply that to my clay pot and uh, once I have that applied I'm just going to press it down slightly here. Don't press it too hard because you want that print to stay. So that's what it looks like before it's painted. So actually before I paint it, I want to try this uh, dollar store glue here. Uh, I'm going to put that on my pot and then I'm going to paint it and this is going to give it a crackle effect. Now I think this crackle would have showed up more if I would have painted it black first and then white, but I just wanted the natural clay color to come through. But you can paint yours black first if you'd like and the crackle will probably show up a little more. Now I do have a crackle medium uh, that I've used in the past that works really well but I wanted to show you what it uh, looks like when you use a uh, dollar store glue. Um, so you're just going to put some glue on there and then you're going to apply your wet paint uh, right away. You're not going to let your glue dry. You're going to uh, apply your paint and um, then um, this is what it looks like when it's dry so you can see that crackle in there 
and that shows up really nice and but I think it would have really shown up if I were to put a black paint underneath there first and then the glue and then the white paint uh, but I think it still looks beautiful so um, once that chalk paint is dried I'm applying a clear coat of wax first before I apply a, my dark wax here because that clear wax is going to kind of act like an eraser just in case I apply too much of the black. So I'm applying some black wax over my clay piece here and that's going to bring out all the detail and all the words and stuff. But I wanted some more detail uh, around that clay piece. So I took this black paint pen, but it was almost worn out. So now I just grabbed a permanent black marker. And uh, you'll see me wipe away some of that marker as well, just kind of to give it more of that distressed look. And I do uh, put some of that marker down into the words as well, just to bring out more of the words on that clay uh, stamp. Uh, and this works really well. If you don't have a paint pen, you can use a permanent marker and you can get permanent markers at the dollar store. So this is what it looks like before and look how beautiful this looks like now. Let me know in the comments what you think of this one, friends. For my final DIY for you today, I have this cute little mushroom that the Dollar Tree has now. I think they have two colors, but I wanted to make it look more farmhouse and more neutral looking. So I just took off that sticker at the bottom and that one came off really well compared to some stickers. Uh, so I have another homemade chalk paint here in like a, a beige color. So I'm just going to paint the whole mushroom uh, a beige and uh, once that chalk paint is dry I am um, going to take a white paint pen. Now I did give this mushroom two coats of that chalk paint. So now I'm just taking that white paint pen and I'm going to apply some uh, white little circles all over the top of the mushroom to make it look more like a mushroom and uh, I did uh, let this paint marker dry and then I applied another coat of this white uh, paint marker uh, with a, um, a second coat of the, the little dots and once all that was dry I applied a clear wax and here's what it looked like before and here is this cute little mushroom now. Let me know what you think of this one. So friends, I hope all of these DIYs gave you some inspiration to create some dollar store farmhouse DIYs for yourself. And uh, let me know in the comments which one of these uh, DIYs was your favorite today. And don't forget to go in my description box and see what all of the other amazing creators created for you today. So thank you so much for sharing some of your time with me today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! <music>